Hey, but uh, I had two really great questions in my DMs that I want to get cut off there, which is why position changes are really better for you. Both too much sitting and too much standing can cause problems. Too much of any one position can create issues for you because you're only using your muscles in one way. And really, we need them to be fluid and dynamic. So your glutes are a great big muscle, the biggest muscle in the human body. And we really want them to work to stabilize your pelvis from the backside. And then your abs kind of act to balance that out. Because if it's your if it's only your glutes, you're going to end up um, tucking your pelvis, and so you need something that kind of stabilizes you from the front. And I also want to know, would you guys be interested in a, a separate post about how different layers of your abs kind of work with your glutes to create this balance? Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Um, Okay, and so the other way that using your abs in a postural way versus gripping with your abs that puts pressure downward, the other way that these two are different is when you're using your abs to balance out your glutes to help get you out of an anterior pelvic tilt, you are lifting up from the bottom. So this is like the post I did several weeks back, months back probably, um, on an elevator where you want to lift up from your pelvic floor, your lower abs, your middle abs, it is an up upward lift and when it is an upward lift it is protective of your pelvic floor because it's not giving you the opportunity to put pressure down on your pelvic floor so holding tension in your abs is a problem when you're gripping from the top and putting pressure down and what I'm describing is not necessarily holding tension in your abs but activating them at a low level to help balance out your glutes so ask me if you have questions let's try it Okay, and the second really great question that I had is someone said that she feels like she is in an anterior pelvic tilt and that I am telling her to posterior pelvic tilt to get out of that position. But in order for her to posterior pelvic tilt, she feels like she has to bend her knees. So in my mind, one of two things is happening here. Either she doesn't have the awareness between her brain and her body to actually create a posterior tilt of her pelvis, and so she's using her knees to get there. Which, if this is the case, get out of standing, lay on the floor, lay on your side, try it in hands and knees, and really work on being able to make your pelvis go both directions that you need to be able to tuck under. Really work on the length in the front of your hips and in the small of your back to make sure that motion is available to you. But if that motion is available to you, like if you can both anterior tilt and posterior tilt, and you can't posterior tilt in standing to get out of that position, um, then I would go back to the post that I did last Friday. I'll share it in here again. Um, but basically, I presented you with three scenarios. Either you're stuck in an anterior tilt, you're stuck in a posterior tilt, or you're stuck in a posterior tilt, but you're compensating with your rib cage and it makes it look like you're in an anterior tilt. And this is why it's really important to go by your hips because your hips will not send you the wrong message. If your hips like to roll inward and have a harder time going backwards, you have to be rolled into an anterior tilt because we're talking about the relationship between your femur and your pelvis. So in that relationship between your femur and your pelvis, if you are in an anterior tilt, your hips are going to roll inward and they're going to be tighter in the front. So they will not roll out well and they will not go backward well. If you're in a posterior tilt, you're going to be tighter in the back. The relationship between your femur and your pelvis is more tension.